conditions. Poverty line, we have a boundary more or less that has been set by numerous report, and it was based on Bonaire. So that means for St. Martin, where cost of living is much higher than in Bonaire. So they must stop playing Papagayo games and know that 2,000 guilder, you understand, 4,000 guilder per cup per household is more or less the borderline based on Bonaire. Okay? So they could get straight to the point and let people know what is more or less needed per household in St. Martin. Stop playing politics. Period. Because they're going to tell you that, they're going to tell you living wage. It is established in the Bonaire uh, report already. What is the average already that is needed in Bonaire? So then you don't have to talk about living wage because then we know what should be the wage for St. Martin. Then we got to go and move now. Before they answer, let me answer. To the pension. No pension should be less than a minimum or a living wage. Because you cannot be working today and be moving into poverty tomorrow after you go on pension. You understand me? After you have given so much to the society. <coughs> so let us stop with all the joke and the masquerading and the politicizing, etc. And let us put the real figures on the table. Now I don't understand realistically how we're going to get there. So we have to set targets there, etc. When we intend to put it. And it should not be when we finish kill killing people. But it should be realistically, you know, within two to three years. What the salary is here in St. Martin should... should um, be made of up. So the answers are there. Politicians should put their money where their mouth is and they should not actually wait on um, political campaign period, but they should realize that they should take care of the citizens so that they can be healthy and they can have a little bit of age to be able to come and vote for them and repeatedly be able to be um, part of this society because people that have built the society and are now on pension they would like to enjoy their pension also um, and it's regrettable that we reach to this point that everybody yes knows that we need a living wage as pensioners but still um, don't realize or they do as if they don't know which legislations need to be changed to actually guarantee that. So by them now stopping with their politics, but really handling the matter of what is needed for the citizens, then the citizens can come out and vote. If you don't deal with that, it's a turn off. You understand? And you must realize that the politicians know that the minimum wage has not been indexed since 2016. Okay? They have not indexed that minimum wage, which should be yearly indexed. And every one of them today is doing as if this is something normal. In addition to that, the actual civil servants haven't received and teachers, let me add, and teachers haven't received no indexation since 2012. Now, an indexation for us in the interpretation and in the meaning is to add the purchase power or to make sure that your purchasing power mm -hmm. remains stable. So the civil servants have, and teachers have seven years, they have not received an indexation to their salary. And you expect those people to come out and vote happily? Well, then all of them would have, wouldn't have gasoline in their car that they to go polling stations. So basically, this is what needs to be done. Okay? Living wage, yes, but they have to index the salaries. Every day when the active civil servants see me, they're talking about COLA. They know now they have to make sure that the cost of living can be indexed and will be indexed on a yearly basis to be able to keep our workers and our pensioners into what they are calling a living wage bracket.
There's a reason you get up on a morning. A reason you pick yourself up, start the day. Maybe it's sheer grit. Maybe it's your ethics. Maybe it's because you know people like you are waiting. For people just like you. We all have our reasons. And for Republic Bank, that reason is you. Every little thing, every big thing. It's all about making a difference in your life. Because after 182 years, if it's one thing we're sure about, is that the difference is you. We're here to help. Republic Bank, we're the one for you. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. Prime Minister, um, you said that uh, there are um, some key vacancies open within government. What you failed to do was to see what vacancies are those. Can you tell us, please? Thank you for that question, Stephen. Um, at this time, as I said, I had a general meeting or a get to know um, the department heads meeting where they were able to highlight um, concerns. It was a very quick meeting. Uh, we'll be having further meetings, but in that meeting, the, across the board, practically every department had an issue with personnel. Um, several of them even had sector heads that were missing. So I cannot go into the specifics at this time as I didn't receive it in writing. Um, but for sure, I know that there are at least three that are sector heads or department heads that are missing. Um, I don't know if it's already updated on the website, but I will ask for that to be done as soon as possible so that the general public can be aware. Um, or as soon as I get the update, that we can then put it out there that the applications can start to come in. Um, for me, it is important because what I've noticed and which once we get the, the presentation from the department on the budget that had been made by the previous um, government and understanding that the extra cuts that have been required to make it viable, I think we must, we must do some type of pushback where that is concerned because here we are We've established a National Recovery Plan Bureau, which is receiving funds or is the conduit for the funds, the recovery funds through the World Bank, Dutch recovery funds. Um, we made agreements for this two years ago. Because of this process, it is taking very, very long. The, in the interim committee, major well, some of these persons went to work for the NRPB. The NRPB itself also has several vacancies. They cannot put them out right away. It's only how many that they can handle at the time. This was also brought to our attention. So there are vacancies as the NRPB. There are vacancies within government that are key to us being able to execute the planned projects to be able to recover the way we want to. So we can sign all these agreements before the end of the week, and we will still hear that we are unable to execute this or that because, for instance, in Buck, we are missing key people. I can't tell you in what is Buck in English? Nigeria and Kingdom Relations. The department that handles Kingdom Relations. So that's a very important department that is working closely with the NRPB. Um, in the NRPB, several I can't tell you off the top of my head either, but several they have um, 14 
um, persons, 14 vacancies available. That is, that is quite a lot out of 23. So there are nine permanent persons. The others are just consultants. We really need to get these positions filled in order to be able to carry out the much needed work regarding the, pro the programs and projects that are online to be um, handled by the NRPB and with the collaboration of government. What people need to understand, Stephen, is that the NRPB and government are not at opposing sides of the same problem. The NRPB is the execution of the approval of projects, etc., bringing it in. Um, government has to approve all the projects or present which projects we consider priority, and then together with the stakeholders, get it executed with the NRPB. So we need each other and we need personnel. Minister Edion? I would just like to add one point to that question, especially pertaining to the NRPB. Uh, in my opinion, and I believe the opinion of others also, using the World Bank as an institution to manage emergency funds was a bad idea. The World Bank is an institution that's supposed to manage long-term projects, not for short-term emergency projects. And a project typically lasts, uh, takes in the World Bank about one to two years just to be executed. So when the World Bank works for big, uh, for other countries, for example, the IMF and World Bank, there's basically similar organizations. If I want, for example, to start a roof project with the IMF and World Bank outside of St. Martin, the project takes about one year initially to, for the, uh, the, the program, and then the second year for the, exec the plan of the execution of it. So for me, using the World Bank as a, as a body to execute emergency um, programs was a slightly bad idea, but it wasn't up to us. And we see, for example, that only $80 million have been spent so far out of a, a committed 268, I believe. And this is mainly because of that process. In the meetings of the World Bank yesterday, I, I know NRPB, we stress on this matter, and they also understand our, our concerns. And we are going to work towards finding ways of m making this process a lot faster and uh, speaking to the kingdom, speaking to, to, to Holland about how can we make this process faster to have this money uh, reaching the, the people that need to be reached and be in a certain time. So that's one key point I, I would like to make clear is the process of World Bank from NRB to World Bank back to government is way too long. Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition. Pin code. Or fingerprint. Download web mobile banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time. For more information, visit web-bank.net forward slash quick dash login.
meeting of November the 1st, held with the Inspectorate of TIAT, on the concerns of the students who failed their driving license theoretical examinations, yesterday, after almost four weeks, we received in writing the opinion of the Inspectorate of TIAT on the issues raised by the students. Since we received the email with the answers yesterday, we will call a meeting with all the students who filed the complaint to discuss the answers received from the TEAT Inspectorate. Reading between the lines, the Inspectorate doesn't see any problem with the digital examination questions and system developed. The Inspectorate blames the driving schools and the driving instructors if they have not adequately prepared the students to pass the digital theoretical examination. Nowhere yet in the response of the Inspectorate of Teat, suggestions we made concerning the psychometric evaluation of the digital examination item bank were considered. Last week, Tuesday, we had a meeting with driving instructors about the complaints received from the students. And we have been informed that the driving instructors wrote a letter to the Minister of Justice and the Minister of Tiat, in which they request the ministers to stop examining the students with a new digital examination system until the preparation material and the examination system is improved with their participation. Since we were informed that in Curacao, this digital examination system was introduced but has been stopped we will look into the reasons why they stopped to use the system in Curacao. Even though they have made a huge investment in digital equipment for persons to pass the theoretical exams. After meeting with the students, we will consider the next step in resolving this issue in a satisfactory manner. Minister Waver. Answers on financial situation of social and health insurance funds at SFV. Minister Chris Waver, as caretaker minister of VSR, this month responded in Parliament questions of Parliament posed since last year, November. They were they, they, these were questions posed to the former minister of VSR, Emily. In his response, to the inquiry on the absolute amount of the SFV funds. Minister Waver said that from the overall view of all funds combined, SFV is financially stable. We quote, he said, the overall balance of all funds combined is 419.6 million guilders positive. And quote, this statement of the minister is misleading. The social and health insurances are different autonomous funds, and SRV is an administrator of the funds. SRV is not to be compared with a business where different services generate income or cost too much, and where all income and expenditure can be combined in one annual account. On the contrary, since the Old Age Pension Fund, the AVBZ Fund, the Sesantia Fund, the Sickness Insurance Fund, ZV, and the Accident Insurance Fund, OV, the Civil Servant Sickness Insurance Fund, FZOG, all these funds need separate annual accounts. In meetings we had with management of SZV, after reviewing the annual accounts of SZV since 2011, we have explained that this way of representing the funds by combining the figures is wrong and unlawful. We have requested management of SZV to split the annual financial reporting on the funds. Loans between funds is illegal. When considering and here is a quote of the Minister Waver in Parliament. When considering the lack of financial stability and sustainability of the healthcare funds, 
and a necessity to contain your coverage on the islands, there are loans between the funds. End quote. Minister Waver explained that this practice has been inherited from the Social Security Bank as Ribé during the time of the Netherlands Antilles. In accordance with the annual audited accounts of 2018, the funds for the negative reserve, FZOG and ZVOV, listen here, this is quoted again, borrowed a total of 191.7 million guilders from funds with positive reserves, AOV, AVV, Cesantia and AVBZ. End of quote. In another statement, the minister contradicts the former statements by saying there are no official loans between individual funds. This is what Weaver told the MPs. In meetings that we had with SFV management, the Consumer Coalition was informed that there were no money transfers from one fund to the other. What happens is that SZV has an overdraft at the bank up to a considerable amount of millions which is costing SZV a huge amount of interest to be paid to the bank. We will insist for management of SZV to correct their way of representing the figures and to provide for each individual fund the annual account. I have also, as Minister of General Affairs, and this is my final announcement, um, been able to meet with the department heads currently of General Affairs, of which, as I mentioned before, several main, you know, are functions that need filling. So you constantly have persons sitting in for others. Um, there are a lot of concerns that have come forth from the Ministry of General Affairs, which we will be tackling one by one. Priority is, of course, legislation at this point, as two of the five requirements is about legislation in terms of this interim government. I'm also going to be looking at what legislation is actually ready to be able to push out and um, focus also on what has been talked about with much discussion in the past few weeks is the screening process. As we may know, it is constantly um, complained about when a process of screening has to take place. However, uh, we have only a launch specialite, a national decree, which decrees how this is done. Um, I have seen recently a draft national ordinance which the legal department will be perusing and we will have stakeholders discussions in terms of what St. Martin wants for its screening process. Of course, it by no way me means that we do not want to have a screening at all. We must, as a country, show that we want corporate governance, good corporate governance, trustworthy persons holding the highest executive office, and as such, we will be looking at what the stakeholders expect, what Parliament would like to see, and move forward with that piece of legislation as soon as possible as well.